Now, if you've ever tried to create a darker design for your website, you'll know it's not as easy as it first may seem. In today's video, I'm going to give you six real world tips you can employ and start introducing into your designs today to help you create a more consistent, more professional dark design. So first of all, let's take a look at the very first tip. So the first thing I want to cover is using brand colors as an accent. You've seen in previous UI videos, link in the description and in the corner right now if you want to check those out. We've kind of got a color palette that I've used and it's this kind of seafoam green alongside some grays and other things. So that's our accent color. And as you can see down the right hand side, I've got a selection of various shades of that accent color. And I'll show you why I'm going to use those in a moment. At the moment, you can see we're using that color for the background of the main area below the image. And while it looks nice enough, it isn't the best way of working. Too much of this, you start to get a little bit of eye strain. It's not the easiest to read. So there's already a couple of problems with it. So how do we go about rectifying it? It's very, very easy. Let's take this final example as our starting point. Let's go ahead and set the background inside here to the color closer to the button. Let's select it. Let's go into our background. Choose our fill color and we're going to replace this. And as you can see, immediately that looks considerably better. I need to address the sort of highlight key around the outside edge and we'll do that in a moment. But obviously by doing this, we lose the contrast in the button. And this is where our accent color really comes into play. Let's select our button. Let's go over to the fill and let's change that to our accent color. And you can see immediately things look considerably better. Let's quickly go and change that outside stroke. So all I'm going to do is for now, I'm going to remove that completely. And you can see we already have a better level of contrast with the text. The lines look better. The text looks better. We need to address one more thing. And if I zoom right in, you can see we've got this little dark strip that was matching the color we used in the button. We need to change that now for our accent color. So we'll do the same thing again. We'll choose our accent color. And we've already created a much better, much more professional and cohesive design simply by using our accent color in a much better way. It now has more visual weight and impact. The buy now button is a lot more evident and everything just ties together a little better. That's one simple tip to make a massive difference to your design. Next on the list is shadows. Now, we know shadows can give your interface designs a nice little lift, give them a certain sense of three dimensionality, and they're very, very popular right now. Up until this point, chances are if you're working in lighter designs, you're used to working with either a shade of the background color itself or using gray. And that's not gonna cut it when we're working with dark mode. Let me demonstrate. If we select the actual background itself, we'll go to our effects and we'll set a shadow inside there and we'll set this to be a mid gray like we're pretty much used to doing. And we'll adjust the parameters for this as well to give a more natural looking shadow. You can see straight away that looks kind of strange. We now get this sort of glow effect around it as opposed to a shadow effect. So we need to go ahead and adjust that. So let's go back in. Let's select this one more time. Choose our background, come into our drop shadow and let's set this to be totally black or pretty close to it. We're gonna go right the way down. We're dealing with 25% opacity in this example, but you could adjust that to taste to give a stronger or lighter effect, whatever you think works. But you'll find as soon as we set that to black, now we get a much more natural looking shadow. The whole design starts to look a little bit more 3D and we just get a more realistic looking layout. So when you're working with dark mode and you're working with shadows, go for black or close to black and adjust the opacity to taste to give you a more realistic looking shadow in your designs. Now, one of the first things you may decide to try and do whenever you're creating designs in dark mode is to use white as the opposing color. As you can see, white is set in our background inside you. However, that doesn't really work. It's okay in small amounts, but when you've got a design that uses a lot of the same kind of layout, it can get a little bit harsh on your eyes in the same way that we talked about with using the accent color. So what I would always recommend is stay away from doing that and you're much better off using a lighter shade or darker shade of the actual background. You can see by using the same color layout that we used in the previous one with the lighter shade of the background color for this particular card design, you can see things are a lot more coherent, avoiding that kind of strong contrast that we have working on the left hand side. You may also be thinking, maybe I could go for total black to give us a darker shade over what we've got inside the background. Well, that doesn't really work too well either. 
Here's a third example where you can see black has been set as the background. And in this example, the contrast is a little too much in the opposite direction. So out of the three designs here, for me, this middle one gives us the best kind of compromise, gives us a nice sense of three dimensionality, different shades of the same kind of color, as opposed to going for either a pure white or a pure black. And the same thing goes when it comes to your text. What we currently have on here on the right hand side on the black background is we're using pure white. However, when we've gone over to the one in the middle, which is the better design, that's not using pure white, it's using a much lighter shade of a gray color. So you can see if we take a look over on the right hand side, we're using a very light shade of gray to reduce that potential eye strain based upon having strong contrast. This is kind of then replicated to give a sense of hierarchy above, and we've covered a hierarchy in previous videos, which again, you can take a look at in one of the corners right now. So we're using various different combinations of those skills and techniques to make sure that our dark designs carry off a great quality looking layout. Now, when you're working with stronger accent colors, really powerful, vibrant colors, using those in darker designs can create a kind of strange shaking effect. It's kind of difficult to emulate on screen right now for this YouTube video, but you've probably noticed it yourself or you will notice it. And if you wonder how to deal with it, it's actually relatively simple and straightforward. You can see I've got this color strip on the right hand side that I've created. The first color is my initial accent color. The rest are lighter shades of the same color. And obviously you could go the opposite way, darker shades depend upon your use case. To create something like this very easily, I use a free tool called Coolers. All I do is insert my base accent color inside any of these. And then what I can do is I can go to the View Shades option. And this will then show me all the shades from white through to black from my initial color. You can see in the middle, there's my starting point. And then what I'll tend to do is either jump up or down two shades at a time, copy those over and create a palette of gradient based colors. This gives me a nice color palette that I can work with. And to avoid that shaky effect, the easiest thing to do is often take a look at your accent color and then make it slightly lighter until that effect goes away. So you can use a palette like this, and there's lots of other reasons why you may want to use this. Things like the little accent color, different various highlights and accents you want to use in your design, but you don't want to draw attention away from the main accent color. You want various different versions, or you could use this for hover effects on buttons and things like that. But that's a quick and easy way of creating those different kinds of shades based upon your initial accent color and avoid that shaky effect in your designs. Now, when it comes to working in dark mode, one of the things that I would recommend you do is offer your viewer the option to switch in and out of dark mode. Give them the ability to have a lighter design and a darker design. And the easiest way to go about doing that inside WordPress is to use either a free plugin or a pro plugin or premium plugin. I've got two to show you, one's free and one's premium, but it is on a lifetime offer over on AppSumo if you wanted this for your own design work. So the first one we're gonna look at is the free option over on WordPress, and as you can see, it's called WP Dark Mode. If you want a premium version, so you have technical support and those kinds of things, over on AppSumo at this point in time, there's the option for Dark Lup which is a WordPress dark mode plugin, and it starts at $39 for a lifetime plan. And you've then got a dark mode option so you can switch in between. A good thing to do to offer your viewers if they want to have something a little lighter to work with alongside the dark mode. Now, as a bonus tip, I also want to go over something that I think is worth bearing in mind. You don't have to have dark mode being blacks, grays, and so on. You can introduce color into it and still have a great look in dark mode. For example, you can see this is using shades of blue. And I've used the same principles as I have done in the gray version below, where we've used various different shades, we've used different accents, different opacities, and different ways of using the accent color to draw attention to the key components, but using and introducing a shade of blue into the overall design to give it a different feel. However, it is still a fully dark mode. Like I say, all using the same skills and techniques that we've covered in the original six different tips. So a little bonus tip, don't limit yourself to only working with monochromatic black and white based designs. Introduce a little color and give yourself a little bit of variety. Now, if you want to get even more out of working with designs and your UI skills, check out the playlist you can see in the corner now. That's got tons of videos that's going to give you great resources. As always, all the applicable links are in the description below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.